<coughs> Halloween spooky season has passed, meaning the <coughs> meaning the next thing we have to look forward to is playing the Mariah Carey Christmas album on repeat for the next two months. Well, that and the release of Hoho, who takes some of the best parts of Healers and Tingyun and sticks them both together. Well, the Tingyun was post 1.3 events Tingyun, but you get the point. In this video, we're gonna be going over Hoho and how to make the most of her kit, as well as her best build and light cones. If you enjoy these types of videos, make sure to like so YouTube knows it doesn't suck, and consider subscribing to the channel. We're almost at 220k subscribers, which is pretty close to 222k subscribers, which if you round up is basically a million and every single sub means a lot, so thank you. With all that being said, my name is Braxophone, and let's talk about Huo Huo. Have you ever wondered where Star Rail's spooky season update went? Well, Hoho -Ho stole, like, all of it. For a character who's scared of her own shadow, she certainly can endure a lot, though. She's got pretty solid HP, and all of her abilities are HP scaling. But in addition to being an abundance unit, she's also a harmony one, like our dead friend. Hoho -Ho is the destruction character of healing. She heals one main target, and adjacent targets get a smaller portion of that, but still pretty significant healing. And unlike her tiny self, her scaling is huge. She heals some of the most in the entire game. But every healer heals more than enough, so what really makes Hoho -Ho different is her giant Luffy ghost tail. After using Hoho's -Ho skill, your team is so inspired to protect her that they'll gain back HP at the start of their turn or when they use their ultimate for the next two Hoho -Ho turns. Think of it kind of like Locha's field where you're gaining some passive heals. If an ally has less than 50% HP, whenever this talent triggers, they also gain HP as well. Her traces also add to her talent as well, with one giving her a stack of her talent at the start of the battle, one giving her one energy after her talent triggers, and one giving her 35% crowd control resistance at all times, which she needs because for some reason every single enemy wants to kill all the Foxians in this game. Now one of the best things about Hoho -Ho is that all of her healing cleanses debuffs. That means that if you're against enemies that stack up dots, imprison, and more, Hoho -Ho can easily stop you from being dominated by Kafka, which is the number one reason why I'm skipping her. Her talent dispels can only trigger up to six times within that turn count, so it does seem kind of limited at first, but it's pretty unlikely you even run into six debuffs in that turn count unless you're fighting God, so I wouldn't actually sweat that too much. Usually I find myself using her skill once every three turns, so she ends up going SP positive by one. Now, remember when I said Huo Huo was also part Tingyun? Maybe it's just a Foxian thing, but Huo Huo's ultimate gives your whole team an attack buff for two turns, as well as restores a portion of their energy. At level 10, it's up to 20% energy to every single teammate except for Huo Huo, which is actually insane because it can instantly top off a unit or two at once. It costs 140 energy to use, which is still less than the amount of US dollars it takes to 100% guarantee a character in this game, so I hope you're ready for a big commitment. But having access to characters with battery is huge for any account. Playing both Tingyun and Huo Huo together is like if you put VTubers in a game of Phasmophobia together. Tons of energy and probably lots of screaming. The screaming is from the enemies. Genuinely, Huo Huo is an amazing character with a super versatile kit. Now, is she better than Locha? It's kind of hard to say because optimizing Star Rail differs by the team and content. Generally, I'd say Locha makes the game easy for everyone, and Huo Huo makes the game easier for players who know what they're doing. Specifically, if you're a fucking nerd who understands rotations and energy. With a high knowledge of the game, you can do a lot with an extra battery on your team, and the best part is she's in abundance, so you still get to keep your other buffers. The one downside to Hoho -Ho, though is that she doesn't have emergency heals, so if you get RNG targeted on the same character four times in a row, you don't have an ultimate you can press to get a huge heal off. You do have her talent heals, but they're not going to be the same as Natasha or Bailu ultimate. But overall, her passive healing should keep you from getting in the red most of the time anyways, just because it's so freaking huge. Her technique has a 100% base chance to lower every enemy's attack for two turns, which isn't a huge huge deal, but you're probably not getting one shot off the bat. Talent priority is a scam because you'll end up leveling most of her kit, but the main piece of advice I want to offer is to bring her ultimate to level 10. It makes her give exactly 20% of your teammates max energy to them, which is the most you'll be able to get without Eidolons. I'll talk about Eidolons later, but since most of you spent all your savings on Jinglu and a kicked up Warp Trotter, let's move on to Ho Ho's build. It is once again time to take a break from farming the quantum set. I know. So sad. Huo Huo is one of the few characters in this game at E0 that doesn't really have room for debate in her best stats. The only debate is in her Relic and Planar sets, which honestly are less of a debate and more of a throw shit out a wall and see what sticks. The best sets to give Huo Huo are Four Piece Messenger if you want to speed buff for your team every time you use your ultimate, Four Piece Wandering Cloud, or Two Piece Mixed Speed, HP, and Healing Bonus sets. Messenger is an amazing set unless you're speed tuning your team a very specific way, but most of the Two Piece Mixed sets are gonna be fine. For Planar ornaments, I recommend Broken Keel because the color 
matches her. Fleet of the Ageless is also good since it'll give your team an attack buff and give her some higher healing output, but I recommend Broken Keel for the crit and effect resistance since she already has built in effect res in her kit that will help you get to the required amount easier. With a win DPS, you can also run Panakani, I, I think that's how you say it, it's the new set, which gives energy regen and damage bonus to similar element characters, like if you ran Blade or Season 1 Don Hung. For stats, you'll run a healing bonus chest piece, speed boots, an HP orb, and an energy regen rope. Some people might be confused about whether or not speed boots are actually good, since her turns will go by faster and you'll lose healing opportunities from her talent, but it's actually not as big of a deal unless she's much faster than your team. She has two turns to let six friendly turns pass, and unless your character's speeds are massively offset from each other, you'll usually get to five or six heals every time. As long as the difference in your team speed isn't insane, speed is going to be the best choice to give her more energy and generate more skill points. Aim for 134. As for the energy recharge rope, it'll make a slight difference on its own to give your whole team battery, but with specific light cones, it can make a much bigger difference by giving you an extra ult or two in a fight, as opposed to just giving you one ult sooner. Here's what a complete build looks like. Boho seems afraid of the dark, so let me shed some light cones on the situation. Light cones are the most important part of Hoho's build because some of them have crazy advantages over others, specifically light cones that give energy. With Hoho's ability to batter your team, any way to increase the energy output she has over a fight is going to be the best way to go. Her signature light cone does just that. It gives healing, an attack buff, and also energy regeneration, which massively helps Hoho get her ultimate up. In general, it's just a really solid abundance light cone that beats out basically all of the other options. Other light cones that give energy are post-op conversation, Shared Feeling, and Locha's Signature Light Cone. Post-op conversation, even at S1, is a top-tier choice, but at higher superimpositions can get you an ultimate one turn sooner than S1. Yes, Hoho doesn't heal on ultimate, so half the Light Cone ability is wasted, but your healing on Hoho will already be good because of her ridiculous scalings, and in my opinion, her use as a support that batteries your other characters is actually more important. With that said, Shared Feeling is also a banger choice because it gives your whole party energy every time you use her skill, and at S5, that's a pretty decent decent amount of energy. It also gives you healing bonus, so that's nice. Quid Pro Quo at S5 is also going to be a top tier choice for her, and it's a free to play friendly one, since you can craft it yourself or get it as a reward for a weekly boss, and it's battery to your entire party as well. Even if it is RNG based, if it goes to Huo Huo, Ting Yun, or your DPS, you're already getting a ton of value out of it. Assuming you don't want the energy to a specific character in the team, you still have a 75% chance of that energy going to someone useful. So overall, it's an amazing choice for free to play players. With that said, if you just want a super consistent light cone that'll make your healing top tier without having to invest a ton of resources, the new free-to-play event light cone Hey Over Here will be one of her best options, since it gives her an HP bonus and healing bonus after skill, which is going to affect all of her heals for the next two turns. Perfect timing is also a pretty solid option if you're playing Broken Keel on her, since you'll get a decent healing bonus based on her effect res. And if you're missing all of these, then you can go for Cornucopia for a big healing bonus, even though the stats are pretty low. Ultimately, for this character, what you really want to focus on is her ultimate. Do your best to get her ultimate up frequently. For healers, light cones tend to mostly be stat sticks anyways. What you really want is the extra effects to be good. Speaking of good, let's talk about some terrifyingly good synergies for Hoho. What's up guys, welcome to my ghost paw print eyes... Uh, Fox team section. Right now we're gonna look at Hoho teams, and honestly, as a healer, like you don't really, there's nothing super specific you have to do with her, but I'll show you some options. So one of the first teams that I wanna talk about is bringing back Zilla. I know so many of us are like, oh no, Zilla got power creeps, she's, she's not good at any- Silence. Zeal's still super good, just like most of the other carries in the game. The thing is, the new units are basically overkill. They can just instantly crush all the content. Zeal is kind of overkill, just not as much overkill. She's still really good, is, is the point. She's, she's a really good character. Here we have two wind and two quantum characters. You have a 50% chance of scoring wind, 50% ch chance of scoring quantum. Obviously, you want quantum, but both of these characters, Hoho and Branya, if you're against wind weak enemies, you're basically guaranteed quantum. And same deal if you're against quantum enemies, you're guaranteed wind. So you basically have all your bases covered for that. And there's nothing in particular like super special about this, 
except for the fact that Hoho batteries your team. And Sila gets her ult fairly frequently, but whenever you get Sila's ult, you actually have an opportunity for a reset uh, to get an extra attack because her ult does so much front loaded damage. So if you like have ads to clear out or something, Hoho helps you get your ult a little bit faster, or if you're just slightly off from having your ultimate, getting that ult and then being able to instantly get another attack off is super nice. Uh, same thing for skill points. If you just need to use a basic attack right after you ult to get your Branya to have enough skill points to put Sila forward and then Sila's skill, you know, just like stuff like that. Hoho does help out a fair bit. And especially because Branya and Silverwolf's ultimates are also very useful. Another team option you have is to use Hoho in a team with like Kafka, Gwenaifen, and Luka. Now this specifically plays on her attack buff because when you use Hoho, she has the opportunity to buff the rest of your team's attack with her ultimate. Obviously for these dot teams, their ultimates do add a fair bit of damage, but it's not as important as some of the characters whose entire gimmicks revolve around their ultimate. But because all of their ultimates are useful to usually applying more dots or like debuffs or buffs, Hoho can be pretty useful here. And then the attack buff to the entire team is going to be super nice because all the dot characters want attack buffs. So there you go. Kafka team is going to slap. Another team you can use is with Jing Liu. And uh, the reason I say this is because Hoho has that passive healing whenever your turn starts. So she's not going to be as effective as Locha here. But one thing that she does have that a lot of other characters don't is the ability to battery your team, which we've we've said multiple times. But here I want to talk about her use with Ting Yun. So Ting Yun can give you a bunch of energy depending on her Eidolons. Specifically, if you have E6, you can generate 10 more energy with your ult. Her ult already restores 50 energy. So with E6, at 60 energy and then Hoho is 20% energy. So for Jing Liu, whose ultimate costs 140, you're already getting a massive portion of that back just between these two characters. Obviously, Branya's ult is going to be very useful as well. But with all these units in conjunction, you can actually have a little bit better uptime on Jing Liu's ultimate, which means more stacks of Sizji. So you might just get like an extra stack of Sizji because that's a lot more damage on the front end. The attack buffs from Hoho and Ting Yun are going to be a little bit less useful than having someone that can shred defense. But the fact that you have basically a harmony and abundance character in one and then two other harmony characters means that your Jing Liu is going to be thriving. You can swap out Branya or Ting Yun for Pela. The only thing is that I haven't done exact like energy calcs or scenarios for this because the, the difference in how many hits you take on Ting Yun and Hoho is going to be a little bit too much RNG to perfectly craft a rotation. So I've just been keeping Ting Yun to be safe, but you can replace Ting Yun with Pela and then keep Branya and Branya will also help you get more attacks with Jing Liu in general. And either one of those is going to be fine. The last team I want to talk about is Dill Pickle, which is going to be this guy, Don Hung Il, the, the Dill Pickle, this guy right here. Dill's ultimate is super important because it gives him the two stacks of free skill points, which is super useful for being able to use his highest level basic attack without actually running out of SP all the time. And with both of these characters, you can reach it fairly frequently. Playing him with a fast Ting Yun was already a decent idea, but with Hoho, you also have plus one SP generation, solid healing, another attack buff, and now energy. The last character that isn't in here can be any support, but I actually want to recommend Hanya. Now she's not actually out yet. She's not available for us to play and test, but she's a character that's going to hopefully be helping with our skill points a little bit. But as of the live stream, she looks to be a character that could help out with skill points a little bit. And so there's the potential for her and Don Hung Il to be a good combo, but also you can play them with any other supporting unit. I just might avoid Branya here just because of the skill point usage. But if you do have Branya's light cone or if you have S1 of her, she should be okay in this spot as well. Now I want to make it clear these aren't the only teams you can play for her. And I also want to give you guys another tip, which is if you have a preservation or a destruction unit with this character, it's actually good to put them in slot two or three. The reason for that is that Hoho has adjacent target healing. And if a character is going to be targeted more than your other characters, so let's say Ting Yun, for example, I'm just kidding. Let's say like Clara, who's a destruction character, putting Clara on the wall means that your adjacent healing, if you use your cast on the character in slot three to also get the most heals possible out of it, you're only going to heal Clara for a smaller portion of it as opposed to the full amount of healing. So you want to run her in slot three so that way your character in slot two and four can get the healing or run her in slot two so your characters in slot one and three can also get healing. This basically makes her a more efficient character. Now, Clara, you, you also want to run in slot two or three anyways, just because of cleaves, but this also applies to other destruction units as well, since they do draw a little bit more taunt. Hoho can also be in the slot right next to them if you prefer, just because she has so much HP as an HP scaling healer, she's going to have a huge amount of that stat. It's going to make her less likely to get one shot. All in all, team building around Hoho isn't super complicated. You just have a couple things to keep in mind. Oh, and I forgot to mention this dude. He's he's pretty good with her. If you have that new uh, that new planer set on, I can't even remember what it's called. P Panacony? Pen Panacony. Yeah, you get what I mean.
After all of the past few units, I know your wallet is probably empty like mine, but maybe if you're more responsible than me, you have some pulse saved up. I'm just kidding, there's no way. Hoho's Eidolons are a pretty solid value, and so is her Light Cone. So I'm gonna go over which is more worth pulling for, and what her Eidolons actually do. Her E1 makes it so her passive healing from talents lasts for 3 turns instead of 2, and also increases your whole team's speed by 12%. Now for most characters, you're looking at around 9 to 13 speed stat, which isn't game changing, but it can help a fair bit. It's just gonna make her and the teams a little bit more comfy to play. Uh, it could also make speed tuning a little bit tougher, so that's something to think about. E2 Hoho is gonna be a game changer though, if you suck at the game. If a character would die while there's a talent stack from Hoho up, they'll have 50% HP restored and not actually die. Could really use that in Classic WoW right now. It does take a stack of her talent away, but it is worth an extra skill use to save a character. It also works up to twice a battle as well, which means it's basically Bailu power creep. Honestly, when you're at super high investment, you won't actually need it too much, but it can be a lifesaver for Tingyun specifically. <laughs> E3 is gonna be a level up to ultimate and talent, which in my opinion is the best value between E3 and E5. And E4 makes Hoho's healing better for lower HP characters. You don't really need this unless we have a Fontaine arc for Star Rail where all the characters are HP scaling because Hoho's multipliers are already insane. E5 is gonna be a basic and skill level up, and E6 is gonna turn Hoho into a taller wind unit. It gives characters that are specifically targeted for healing with Hoho a 50% damage bonus for the next two turns. Now, I'm not saying to spend money on this game, but if you're going to, please put your friend code down below so I can add you and use your E6 Hoho and flex my damage. Thank you. Hoho's Eidolons are pretty solid, but she's so good at E0 that I don't really think you need them. If she is one of your favorite character designs, though, you can always pull for her Light Cone, which helps her get her ult one turn sooner with an ER rope and also gives attack buffs to your team. That Light Cone is good on every single healer in the game, including Locha, who doesn't even scale on HP. So I highly recommend that over Eidolons if you're gonna pull for any. But for broke college students, out there, there are plenty of four-star options that your Hoho can use to be strong, so you don't have to worry about pulling for anything extra. All in all, this character is pretty crazy. I don't necessarily think she's like Locha Power Creep or anything. She just provides a different value. Like, Locha is good for everyone, and Hoho is good for sweaty nerds. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video, and if you guys have a second, let me know what your favorite MMO is if you've ever played one, and if you haven't, let me know what your favorite RPG is. I'm looking for some new games. I got a whole bunch of flights ahead of me for the holidays, so I'll see you guys again in three weeks.